Python has great built-in data structures, but in general, they're very geared toward in-place mutation. But the functional style calls for immutable data structures, where we want to return new versions of a data structure when we perform operations on it, so that we can reason about it more easily. At some point, pretty much all big Python programs end up with bugs caused by spooky action at a distance due to data structure mutation. Say you have some code like this. And most of the time, you end up calling this function with a list literal. But one day, someone comes along and adds a call like this. Now you might have a bug that's very hard to track down, because getList might be holding onto a reference to the list that it returns, and using it for some other reason later. The call to add item mutates the list in place, which affects all the code that holds a reference to that list. This simple example applies to all mutable objects in a complex Python app, and they're not very hard to let them slip in, unless you know what you're looking for. So instead of mutating the list in place, we'll rewrite that function to return a new one. Now our function's safe no matter what other code may do with the list that's passed in. This idea also applies to custom classes in our Python programs. Say we have a two-dimensional point class. The translate method modifies the data structure in place. Again, this is something we want to avoid with functional programming, so we could instead write it something like this. Now our translate method returns a new point object, avoiding any possible bugs caused by the mutation. Sometimes you've got to deal with data structures that don't have any built-in non-mutating operations. For example, while the list type has a purely functional plus operator, there's no method for adding items to a dictionary without mutating it. So how can we merge the dictionaries A and B? Dictionaries happen to have a copy method. So even though we end up mutating the dictionary, if we create a copy of it first, we maintain purity. But what about instances of classes? Sometimes we can avoid the need to explicitly copy and mutate our instances, but not always. Our point class, for example, worked fine because all of its data was parameterized in the constructor, so we could just create a new one. But if that's not the case, you may need to use the copy module to explicitly create a copy of an object before mutating it. That about covers it for dealing with built-in data types and objects in a functional way. With the help of third-party libraries, we can get much more convenient and performant functional data types, but these techniques will get you pretty far in standard Python. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.